So today we will discuss the solution of the generalized Abel equation. So in the last class we have seen the solution of integral equation with the help of uh, the convolution theorem for Fourier transforms. So in order to solve the generalized Abel equation we use the convolution theorem of Laplace transforms here. So, the generalized Abel equation is given by f of x is equal to integral 0 to x phi of t divided by x minus t raised to alpha dt where the value of alpha is between 0 and 1. Here f of x is the known function and phi of t is the unknown function. So, we have to find the value of phi of t. So, solving this integral equation means we, are find, we have to find the value of uh, the unknown function phi of t. So, in order to solve this or in order to find the value of phi of t, we will take the Laplace transform on both sides of the equation. We will get Laplace transform of f of x is equal to Laplace transform of integral 0 to x phi of t divided by x minus t raised to alpha dt. So here we have to apply Laplace convolution theorem on the RHS. So the Laplace convolution theorem is given by the Laplace transform of integral 0 to x f1 of x minus t f2 of t dt is equal to the Laplace transform of f1 of x into the Laplace transform of f2 of x. So, but in our case this uh, of this problem, we can see that f1 of x minus t is 1 by x minus t raised to alpha. That means x minus t raised to minus alpha and therefore f1 of x, this is f1 of x minus t and therefore f1 of x is equal to x raised to minus alpha. Wherever x minus t appears, we replace it with x. So, this is f1 of x is equal to x raised to minus alpha and f2 of t is equal to phi of t. So, using this uh, Laplace convolution theorem to find the Laplace transform of this equation. So, according to this one, this is equal to... Uh, so, we modify this as Laplace transform of integral 0 to x, x minus t raised to minus alpha, phi of t dt. So, this is f1 of x minus t and this is f2 of t. So, f1 of x is x raised to minus alpha. So, according to this equation, this should be equal to Laplace transform of f1 of x, Laplace transform of x raised to minus alpha into Laplace transform of f2 of x, f2 of t is phi of t, then for, therefore f, f2 of x is equal to phi of x. So this will be equal to Laplace transform of x raised to minus alpha into Laplace transform of uh, phi of x. So substituting this in the above equation, we will get Laplace transform of f of x is equal to Laplace transform of x raised to minus alpha into Laplace transform of phi of x. So therefore rearranging this Laplace transform of phi of x can be written as uh, Laplace transform of f of x divided by Laplace transform of x raised to minus alpha. But we know that the Laplace transform of x to the power n is equal to n factorial divided by s raised to n plus 1. And therefore, Laplace transform of x raised to minus alpha is equal to minus alpha factorial divided by s raised to minus alpha plus 1. So, substituting this value over here, we will get L 
Laplace transform of i of x is equal to Laplace transform of f of x divided by minus alpha factorial divided by uh, s raised to minus alpha plus 1. So this will go to the numerator. So this can be written as s raised to 1 minus alpha. So this will be in the numerator into L of f of x. Laplace transform of f of x divided by minus alpha factorial. So now dividing uh, both sides by s we will get 1 by s into L of i of x. So dividing this equation by s, the 1 is raised to 1 here is cancelled and we have s raised to minus alpha L of f of x. Laplace transform of f of x divided by minus alpha factorial. So we have already seen that Laplace transform of x raised to n is n factorial divided by s raised to n plus 1 and therefore Laplace transform of uh, x raised to alpha minus 1 is equal to uh, alpha minus 1 factorial divided by s raised to my alpha minus 1 plus 1. So cancelling this once we have alpha minus 1 factorial divided by s raised to alpha. So this can be uh, so we can take this to the numerator and we can write a Laplace transform of x raised to alpha minus 1 is equal to s raised to minus alpha into alpha minus 1 factorial. So s raised to minus alpha can be written as Laplace transform of uh, x raised to alpha minus 1 divided by alpha minus 1 factorial rearranging this equation and substituting the value of s raised to minus alpha from here to this equation we will get 1 by s into Laplace transform of phi of x is equal to Laplace transform of x raised to alpha minus 1 divided by alpha minus 1 factorial into Laplace transform of f of x divided by minus alpha factorial. So, uh, we have an equation like this and we can multiply the numerator and denominator on the RHS by alpha. So we can multiply the numerator and denominator of the RHS by alpha. We will get alpha into Laplace transform of x to the power alpha minus 1 into Laplace transform of f of x divided by alpha into alpha minus 1 factorial. Alpha minus 1 factorial is 1 into 2 into etc. up to alpha minus 1. Into alpha will give alpha factorial. So we will get uh, this equation alpha into Laplace transform of x to the power alpha minus 1 Laplace transform of f of x divided by alpha factorial into minus alpha factorial. So the combining this factorials and applying the convolution theorem again. So we know that in the first time we have learned gamma functions alpha factorial into gamma plus 1 into gamma minus 1 alpha factorial in the minus alpha factorial in the varnam pi alpha divided by sin pi alpha. So this can be written as pi alpha divided by sin pi alpha. And substituting this over here, we will get 1 by s into Laplace transform of phi of x is equal to alpha into L of uh, x raised to alpha minus 1 L of f of x divided by pi alpha divided by sin pi alpha. So this pi, sine by alpha will go to the numerator and this alpha terms will cancel. We have sine by alpha divided by pi into Laplace transform of x raised to alpha minus 1 into uh, Laplace transform of f of x. So we got an equation like this. So we have to simplify this equation using the uh, Laplace convolution theorem again. Okay.
So we have already seen the Laplace convolution theorem. Here we have to simplify L of x raised to alpha minus 1 into L of f of x. So we know that L of f1 of x into L of f2 of x is equal to the Laplace transform of integral 0 to x f1 of x minus t f2 of t dt. So here f1 uh, in this case f1 is x raised to f1 of x is x raised to alpha minus 1 and f1 of x minus t is therefore x minus t raised to alpha minus 1 and f2 of x is f of x and therefore f2 of t is equal to f of t and substituting this f1 of x minus t and f2 of t over here we can simplify this as we can uh, apply the Convolution theorem in the reverse uh, inverse form as uh, Laplace transform of integral 0 to x, x minus t raised to alpha minus 1 into f of t dt. So, uh, we can take this to the uh, denominator and we will get <coughs> this is equal to the Laplace transform of integral 0 to x f of t dt divided by x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. So, uh, substituting this we will get the result as 1 by s into L of i of x is equal to sin pi alpha divided by pi into Laplace transform of integral 0 to x f of t dt divided by x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. So, we have, so you have already learned this, that is 1 by s into L of phi of x is equal to the Laplace transform of integral 0 to x phi of t dt. You can learn Laplace transform, but you can learn it. That is why we have to apply the LHS to apply the Laplace Laplace transform of integral 0 to x phi of t dt is equal to sin pi alpha divided by pi into Laplace transform of integral 0 to x f of t dt divided by x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. So, sin pi alpha by pi constant and we have to Laplace transform in the same way. So, Laplace transform of sin pi alpha by pi integral 0 to x f of t dt x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. Now, we have to cancel the Laplace transform in the same way. Now, we have to cancel the Laplace transform on both sides. We will get integral 0 to x phi of t dt is equal to sin pi alpha by pi integral 0 to x f of t dt uh, divided by x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. So, phi of t in the way, we have a solution and we have a LHS solution and integral and the solution is the same and we have to differentiate the differentiate so differentiating both sides by so, y of t integral 0 to x where x in the uh, function idle phi in the integral like it up in the derivative comma phi of x is equal to phi of x is equal to then the derivative comma sin pi alpha by pi into d by dx of the derivative integral 0 to x f of t dt divided by x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. So, this is the solution. So, we have to generalize the real equation which is the solution. So, we have to convert the Laplace transform into convolution theorem. Okay. So, we have to summarize it. So, we have to generalize the real equation. f of x is equal to integral 0 to x phi of t divided by x minus t raised to alpha dt. We have to the equation. The solution is given by phi of x is equal to sin by alpha by pi into d by dx of integral 0 to x f of t dt divided by x minus t raised to 1 minus alpha. So, we have to generalize the real equation. The solution is equal to the solution. So, we will use the Laplace transform in the convolution to use it. Thank you.